Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to National Basketball in here today. We'll be under 19B. Subway All Ireland Schools Cup, where we have the visitors in Navy, Clausha, Pubble, and Bantry from Cork. Taking on Colossian Aterva from Galway, team in yellow. So I'm joined here in the commentary from Matt Hall, head coach of UL Eagles. So, uh, Matt, obviously, this is the last game of the day. But how do you see this, th this one going here today? Uh, fairly exciting game. Both had good wins in their semi final. I think it's going to be a fairly quick up and down type game, which is probably good for the neutral to watch. Um, some fairly athletic kids out there. And uh, I know, speaking to Coach Joe Norton from Corrib early on, He's looking for a good performance. I know that also uh, Pat Cohen was up to watch their semi-finals, and he'll have a good idea of what to expect from Cobb. So you expect it to be a fairly tight affair. Yeah, I just remember from last year's um, school finals, it might have been under 16 or could have been under 19, but we obviously Bantry featured not in one player in particular here who goes to the line, Liam Cotter. Had a really good game there last year, so it'll be interesting to see if he can continue this on again for the second time playing in the National Basketball Arena in successive years. So Cotter gets that one to go, one for two. Oshino Gamala on the point here now for Corb. And Bantry kind of up to go with his zonal defence, forcing them to shoot from ball from the outside as Madden goes back to Corb. Ward drives baseline. Dumped inside, rebound taken away by Bantry. Flynn gets the rebound, outlet to the Clifford, Clifford gets blocked away. Yeah, great pace to the game early on. Both teams up and down. Corey making sure that they don't give up anything easy on the break. Both coaches, as you mentioned there, Pat, obviously kind of have you, or sorry, Matt, had each other scouted. But one thing you notice there, both of them are opting to go up the zone and defence, kind of forcing the other teams to shoot the ball from the outside, take what we call like the less percentage shot. Yeah, and Corey did a good chance, uh, a good job last time down of penetrating in that zone, weren't, f weren't rushed as uh, Bantry tried to keep everything on the outside, but they got inside eventually, so it'll be interesting to see how both teams break down the zone as the game goes on. Brady goes inside to Cotter. Cotter uses the glass. Mentioned the last time we went to the free throw line, just about a uh, big role he played in last year's game. And already he's the only points here this on the 19B final as he takes his total to three. Oshino well, Gamal on the point again. Ward with a really nice three-point shot there. Probably a bit further out in the actual three-point line markings, but he won't mind that one. Really nice shot to settle the nerves as Carve get their first basket. Flynn puts up a three. Can't answer from the last three. Ball taken away by Cahill Madden. He goes back to his three-point shooter, Mr. Ward himself. Really ball knocked away. We mentioned the pace here earlier, Matt, and you can really see it's a really up-and-down basketball with both teams looking, I think, to score the basketball before the other team has a chance to get back. Yeah, it's a really positive start. Sometimes in these games, they can be nervous starts, as you mentioned, but even you see the last three that didn't go in really looked like he had a good chance when left the hand and the three-point shot that went in for Coy was a beautiful shot. So, see, there's a lot of skill out there for the 19B competition, so should be, hopefully, a good game. Yeah, as James McLaughlin grabs a big defensive rebound there, keeping him for his team. On the other end, we're going to have a first up a Bantry. As Brady checks out of the game, and he's replaced by Hugh Fitzgerald. So Hugh's going to come in another big body. He's going to play at the back of that zone defensive Bantry, hoping he can come up with some rebounds. Ball back on Ward. This time doesn't look to shoot, looks to go inside. Murray there for Bantry gets deemed that he reached in foul, so it took across the arm of his opponent. That's going to be his first foul. Madden. Tries to find Ward again. Murray comes away with the steal. And again, this fast break that we talked about. Murray goes himself, even though he had numbers. Probably feels he should have dished the ball off the cotter or one of his teammates did. He may have had a basket. Got a bit of lucky there, so still, still have the ball. So just uh, listening down there, Matt, there on the last possession down, Corrib had the, an out of bounds, and the coach in Bantry was shouting, six is getting the ball. So as you mentioned there about Pat Curran going up to do a bit of scouting on Corrib, they must maybe be putting a marker on uh, Cronin Ward. 
Yeah, there's a three-point shot goes in for Clifford there. Yeah, it's clear to hear from up here, so they obviously have a good idea of what's happened from out of bounds. And uh, Ward with the three-point shot earlier on. Uh, he had a bit of an injury last week, but uh, I understand he's fit to play now. He seems to have taken a bit of a break. No, here he is on the ball. Back to Ward, puts up that nice three-point shot of his. Two threes from Cronin Ward for his team. Let's yeah, one, one of the difficult things, sorry, Danny, is, is that he's done a great job of scouting him, but at this standard, not always the easiest thing to stop what you know you're trying to stop. As The boy's not used to as much clubs basketball as some of the ones you've seen in the A basket. You see another fantastic basket there. Yeah, so we spoke about that, so on defence and forcing teams to shoot the ball from the outside. I think if Cronin Ward continues to shoot the ball like that, it'd be interesting to see how long Bantry do look to stay in this zone and will they maybe go into more of a man-to-man -man thing as Cotter comes away with the rebound. Outlets the ball, Murray. And again, that fast break basketball, which Bantry seem to be in favour of. They take a lead, it's 10 points to 6 with 5.40 here remaining. James McLaughlin, and the ball knocked away again. And it's that fast break basketball from Bantry. Downey, three doesn't go. Yeah, Bantry's pace up and down has been good so far and something that Cobb will have to keep an eye on. It can't afford to give up too many open layups in the fast court in a game that seems like it's going to be a close one. Murray fires up that long three. Good rebound in the inside. Back to Downey. Back to Cotter. He uses the glass. Seven Liam Cotter takes his total to five points. You know, really nice finish there. One handed jump shot there just in the middle of the key. Did well to use the glass. Again, as we look down the Bantry coach again, moving through his substitutions. Seems to me he likes to play a kind of a fast up tempo game of basketball. Keeping his guys fresh, subbing in, subbing out, making sure everyone gets a rest and everyone can play the style of basketball he likes to see yeah he's a big bench there and you can see in the warm-up a lot of good athletes getting up and down the floor in the warm-up and there's been no change since they've gone in as you mentioned but again they've left this man wide open from the three-point line and makes it three for three number six crown award really nice stroke there on the shot Mac. it's not it's not just um a bit of luck on that three-point shot you know he's a really nice stroke to knock down that shot no, he's looked very confident from the three-point line. Also going to the basket, so you'd expect to see a little bit more from him as well. He looks like he can do a bit of everything here. Potter on the other end, as we mentioned in pre-game. Takes his total to seven points. So I suppose early on after the first five minutes, there's really been two standout offensive players, one on either side. We have Cronin Ward tallying up nine points, and Liam Cotter on the other end tallying up seven points. So be interesting to see whether it be the outside game or the inside game of Cotter which proves vital coming down the stretch. As here we go, Ward steps inside. Murray, really nice use of his hands, got down low to knock that one away. Ward showing that he can do something on defence as well. Knocking that shot away, just obstructing it. As Oshin comes away with it here now. I think the referee had his choice of fouls there. There seemed to be plenty of contact in around the basket. Yeah, there's a good bit of contact there. Had to be two shots eventually, but maybe a pass on the break would have been the better option. Yeah, and you mentioned the two players have really been outstanding so far in Ward and, and Cotter. It'd be interesting to see. We can see that Ward can put the ball on the floor, but very much the plan for Pat Cohen is to protect the basket here, and I suppose he's probably happy enough to give up those three threes in what's almost three and six and a half minutes now, but not allowed anything going to the basket. Free throws doesn't go as Flynn comes away with it here. Clifford to Murray, back to Clifford. And use it unfortunately. The ball just comes off the ring. We've seen it happen today a few times since this is our fourth game. People missing some of these easy shots. Not being too used to the surroundings and not being too used to the baskets here in the National Basketball Arena. Again, it's much bigger than a lot of the school gyms that some of these kids will be used to playing in. As Ward. I think when the ball left his hands that time he symbolises that that was off. Ward picks up the defensive rebound. He's just acting the point guard now, bringing the ball forward for his team. Gets it back to James McLaughlin. 
Toshino from Hoyla moves the ball inside. McLaughlin steps inside. Referee Joe Robinson deems that that one's going to be a foul. Yeah, and Bantry in penalty earlier, so it'll be two shots here, 2.50 to go. I think just the speed up and down, Thomas Flynn for Bantry, he's been good with the ball, taking a couple of threes that looked like they had a chance going in but bounced out, so we're expecting to see a little bit more from him. But Bantry have looked a little bit more settled on the break than the times that uh, Corb have had the ball on the break, and, and that shows in the points as well. Corb yet to score on the break, the only points they've got from the three-point line. And that man, Ward. Number 14 there, TJ Sullivan checks into the game for Bantry. Bantry using eight players already in this first seven minutes and ten seconds. So just indicating kind of the strength and depth and I suppose the, the confidence that coach Pat Curran has in his team. Oshino <laughs> Gohala steps inside. Murray with a lovely little tip away there. Unfortunately, he can't go on to it. Madden inside, lovely pass. Ball comes looking haul it. And unfortunately, referee Joe Robinson deemed that it's a 24 second violation. So remember, each team only has 24 seconds to shoot the ball when they get it on offense. So, really good defense and banter here to stop that. For a first time on a while, we've seen Bantry to slow the ball along here as Murray brings the ball up and is happy to swing it around. They go inside to Cotter. Ball goes up, Cotter comes away, unlucky can't get this one. Cahal Madden comes away with the ball for Corrib. Out at the Cronin Ward. Thinks about the shot, goes back. Machina Gohala with the point. Seems to be a high pressure, kind of a 3 2 zone defense now with Bantry resorting. James McLaughlin, really good job to get that defensive rebound. Sorry, a bigger part of an offensive rebound, kept the ball up high. He used his height and his athleticism to get up and put the ball in the basket. The referee deemed he was pushed in the body. So now he's going to get one shot. And with that, we're going to take a timeout with two minutes to go. So we'll be back just after this timeout. James McLaughlin there gets that one to go. So knocks it down. He'd be happy with that, giving him three points on the board. As it's Bantry, he lead on the scoreline 14 to 12, with just on two minutes remaining. Again, Bantry forced to play with slow basketball this time. Cronin Ward picks up the defensive rebound. You see the top of that zone there for Bantry, regardless of where the ball is, they've got three guys almost all within the two elbows there, so there's no room down the middle, and that caused the travel that time as Ward tried to find a bit of space. Fitzgerald on the inside, gets the ball back up to Sullivan, to Cotter. Ball gets swung across, Clifford puts up a long three. Bit of luck on that one there, Matt. Hit the board, hit the rim and back off the board. Yeah, we've seen a good few of those stay in fairness off the backboard. I suppose the first shot that goes in for you in a game like this, doesn't matter how you're going, hopefully you gain a bit of confidence from there on in. James McLaughlin on the ball, moves inside. Madden, he puts up the three. 
Ball goes out of bounds, and referee deems it comes off a bantry. Morning Ward, Maclock Line. Conghela passes out to Ward. This one rims out, shooting two from four now at the moment. Ward, you can see there an expression on his face. He was a bit frustrated with himself that he didn't get that one to go. But on the other end, Kevin Clifford back to back three pointers. His team, he's playing with a smile on his face now as he stretches the lead out. 20 points to 12 in favour of Bantry. And that's it. It doesn't matter how the first one goes in. Once you've got one basket, gains confidence and you hit nothing but net on that second one there. Back lock line. Did it from the inside. Forced to take him from the outside this time. Really good call there by referee Joe Robinson. You can see there from, from, you can see from our angle that Cotter pulled the defensive rebound and he got pulled in the back. So we've just got two seconds remaining here. Let's see, will Bantry get a shot off? They go to Clifford. Will he make a three for three? Rims out. So we'll be back very shortly with the second quarter. So Lynch welcome back here for the second quarter. As uh, we're in the under 19B Subway All Ireland Schools Cup, where we close your pub with Bantry. Who are playing against Kalosh Nakorab from Galway. So it's the team Bantry from Cork, who leads into the first 20 points as well. As I said, I'm joined here by Matt Hall from UL Eagles. Uh, Matt, we've seen one or two standout performances in the first quarter. So I suppose, what are we hoping to see here in the second quarter? Well, it'd be interesting from Cor's point of view, they need to get a couple of scores going to the basket. They got one and one from James McLaughlin, but everything else come from the three-point line from Ward, whereas you've seen a little bit more from fast-break scores, a couple from the three-point line, and some inside basket. We see a three-point shot go up here for Bantry, so they'll be a lot happier in the types of shots they get in. Bantry's zone defence work quite well in restricting what they've given up to Cor, but Cor will need to try and get a few easier baskets in order to get themselves back into the game. Yeah, and I think, look, when you look at 20 points in the first quarter, uh, it's a good scoring here for the school's basketball. The Bantry coach would definitely be happy, you know, if he was to come out with a scoreline in the high 70s or 80 points. Surely that should be good enough offensively to win a game here. As Murray goes on the fast break. Murray finds himself open on the other side. Unfortunately, he can't get this one to go. Yeah, better from... Better from Corb last time on, on offence, managed to get the ball inside to McLaughlin, so he'd be pleased with that. He couldn't score, but if they can do that a little bit more often, he's shown that he's able to get the ball inside. A couple of times they've lobbed it into him in the high post, kicked it back out again, but he'll they'll be looking for a little bit more from him offensively, I imagine, in the next quarter. 
Substitution there, their starting point guard, um, Oshin O'Gonra, comes back into the game there for Corrib. So he's after getting his rest. As Bantry looked to go with that fast break. Looking down there, I suppose if Pat Curran isn't too upset with that turnover, he seems to he wants the team to play at that type of pace. And as you know, Matt, when you do look to play at that type of pace, at times there will be one or two, I suppose, turnovers causing it. But dropping the ball out over the sideline isn't the worst type of turnover to have. No, I suppose he, he set up the play zone and get the two boys to leak out. And they've been very good at getting up and down. As another three-point shot goes for Ward. That's his fourth of the afternoon, as he said. Takes this all to 12 points. So really is one of the uh, main offensive scorers here for Corrib. This is here from Corrib. is coming a little bit higher now. Cotter on the inside. Cotter goes up. Referee deems that he comes back down with the ball. Good defense there from Cronin just to force Cotter to travel. Machine back on the point. See, can he get things going for his team? They go back to Madden. Madden with a kind of a crazy pass, but it got there in the end. Cotter did well to come away with that steal. Again, Bantry looking to go with that fast break. Maybe even though well the break wasn't on. Cronin Ward steps inside. Really good defence there by TJ Sullivan. Just to knock the ball out of his hands. He's up. James McLaughlin. We Matt, you spoke with him a few minutes ago, how he's starting to come into the game. Really good offensive rebound there and a score. Yeah, it's always difficult to tell from up here how tall some of the players actually are. But he's shown that he's big enough to get the ball and he affects that shot as well. Anytime inside. And they're really soared above everyone to get the offensive rebound. And that's the kind of basket they need just to, just to complement the shooting of, uh, of Cronin Ward. Corrin were fond of that cross-court pass there just over the top of the zone, forcing Bantry really to start turning their heads on that. As coach John Ochten stands up there and applauds his team's offence, he'll definitely be happy with this 5-0 uh, five, five to zero run in the start of the second quarter as Pat Curran calls a timeout. Madden there gets the first one to go for him. And again, rebound by the big man inside. So again, we're at 6 minutes, 30 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Cronin Ward finds himself open. Cronin Ward, you can't believe that guy open. Yeah, his fifth massive three from Ward, but again, it's McLaughlin that's really made the big difference since he started getting the game, getting a few extra offensive rebounds, even gives that shooter a little bit more confidence that if he were to miss, they have a chance of getting the ball back. So, Matt, you obviously might remember there, you know, we've seen CJ Fulton with 15 three-pointers here last year. Cronin Ward has five already. We're still 26 minutes of basketball remaining. You know, I wonder, does he know what the record is out there? You know, will he be looking to kind of uh, to beat that himself? He keeps going at this rate. He's going to put it in jeopardy. And interestingly enough, like he's he's turned down a couple of the great block at the basket. But we talked about that 
Coach Cohen knew what they wanted to do and he's seen every time down, they have an idea where he is, but they've struggled to locate him at any point and he's seeing wide open air on the top of the key again. And I think that comes from the offensive coach now by Coach John Ogden. Spoke there about, I called it a while ago, crazy pass, but that skip pass in the zone is very hard to defend and Crown Ward finds himself always on the weekend side as his point guard Oshin O'Horan drives inside there lays that up and it was 2012 at the end of the quarter you might remember so it's 11 to 0 run here now by Corrib to start the second quarter really good response there by Sullivan that's exactly what Bantry needed you know I think the coach was looking there Bantry coach looking up at the board he had no timeouts left he used one in the first quarter one already in the second so he was just hoping that his team could step up as that one rims out, but again, a really good sh shot selection. He's not forcing anything there. Yeah, he's actually doing a really good job on defense as well. He's affected a lot of shots. Got a few blocks already. Madden holds up the play, waiting for the shooter to join him. That skip pass as we spoke about again, as the coach Pat Curran there under us is out and who watched the shooter. Some of the Bantry bench and coach there wanted a, a foul on that one, but I think sometimes you got to reward the good defence as Madden just stood straight up there. Murray checks back into the game here for Bantry. Did well at the top of the zone, Murray there a while ago. He had a couple of nice steals and, you know, some aggressive. He's after getting his rest, so that's what Bantry will need now to him to come back into the game. As the Bantry fans can see their team need a lift. They're singing, we love you, Bantry, we do. As Flynn puts up the long, long tree. James McLaughlin takes the rebound. Touch pass out to his point here, Cahill Madden. He goes to Oshima Kahormala. Drives inside. Really nice finish on the baseline. Bantry with some big boys at the back of that zone there, so Oshima did really well to get in there and finish the basketball. Yeah, Coach Joe Norton be really happy with this. Taking a, a, a long time, three minutes, three minutes forty to go in this second quarter before we've seen what some of the Corb lads can do. But over the last two, three minutes, we've seen more and more people that we haven't been mentioned come into the game and get into the basket and getting scores. Cotter goes to the line here now, hoping to get his first score this uh, second quarter. He had a good start to the game, chipping him with five points in the first quarter. This will give him a chance to get his uh, his first score this quarter. Gets the shooter's touch and gets the roll. So Cotter goes two for two. So it's Corrib who lead on a scoreline 25 as Bantry's 24 with 3 minutes 30 seconds remaining here in the first half. So as you look down there no man and the defence look they have to change things up. They're not going to let Crone Ward uh, get up at that many three pointers it looks. Shane Murray looks to be doing a man to man kind of a job on him where the rest of the team are sticking with that zone. So Murray does a defensive job and then he comes out and knocks down a big tree for his team. 
So yeah, very much there. You can see him again here. They're in a box and one. So it'll be interesting to see because oh, like Ward looks like he can play as well. Looks like he can put the ball on the floor at the moment. He's just gone to the corner. But it'll be interesting to see how much of the, they put the ball in his hands. Machine shot doesn't go. Rebound taken away by Flynn. Bantry again looking to push the break. Well, maybe the break was none. So I'm at this box and one um, this defense. I suppose it's something common you see at all levels, and it's really used. If anything, it it tells a player like number six there, um, Cronin Ward, that you're doing such a good job. We feel that we need to take you out of the game here as such. Yeah, difficult. Uh, I mean, we see players of all standards, Americans in this league and the Super League, struggling with this kind of thing over the years when it's happened. It all depends on the player himself. If he's happy to sacrifice set screens as he's about to do here, and if the other players can step up, it can be short-lived. But if they continue to try and get him the ball when he's not open or to try and force things through him, then it really works out well and uh, will become a huge part of how Bantry are going to get themselves back in this game and have got themselves back in the lead here. Brady on the inside. Referee deems it's going to be a jump ball situation. So that is actually going to be a curl ball with just under two minutes here remaining. So Cronin Ward. That's the ball back to Madden. Ball back to Oshin. Oshin and Mugham Horla. Madden drives inside. James McLaughlin. Oshin. Really nice crossover there. They seem to be doing a lot of uh, moving the ball around here. War didn't touch it in the whole offense there, so it just shows the Bantry's defense is working. Yeah, it's very much down to a 4-4 four four game. At the moment, War doesn't seem too concerned. He's running around keeping his man busy. But Cobb need to get someone else to score. It's a nice drive in the end from McLaughlin. If they get scores, they won't worry about it too much. But if they struggle to score and the and the gap gets bigger, then they'll have to do something about it, maybe change the way they run the offence against this box and one. So referee Joe Robinson there blows for a double dribble. Just unfortunately, some of the players on the court didn't hear it, just with the, the noise levels from the Bantry crowd again. So it's a 1.20 to go as well. It's perfect timing for coach Joe Norton. Very difficult to come up with a plan for box and one. Wouldn't have been expecting it before the game, during the game, but at least half-time will give them that chance to reassess things and maybe put something in plan for the second half. Plus, my coaching thing, a lot of times uh, coaches would result to maybe putting Crone and Ward at the point guard. So then it just kind of comes up into a, like a 1 2 2 zone. You put the team in, and John Ochton, I think, with his coaching staff, will have a look at that at half time and see exactly the best way to do as McLaughlin drives inside. Excellent rebound there. Excellent rebound. You know, went right over the top of his opponent, pulled down that defensive rebound as Joe Robinson just indicating there to John Ochton. Um, for the players to leave the ball after they score. We all know Bantry love to run the ball, whether they get a steal or a score. So I suppose he deems that what Corrib done there kind of just slow the game down. As Murray floats that one up, this one doesn't go. We're going to have 30 seconds remaining, and it's 27 all at this stage. So Corrib out scoring Bantry in this quarter, 15 points to 7. So Coach John Ockton will be really happy with that. Oshino Gumhorla passes out to James McLaughlin. James all to score, and he can be shown he can be a scoring threat for his team. Unfortunately, this time he falls for travelling violation. Coach Pat Corm was trying to maybe get in one of his shooters just before that went down. As we got six seconds remaining, Flynn puts up a long one. And at half time, it's going to be 27 Corrib, plays 27 to Bantry. We'll be back very shortly for the second half.
So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back here for the second half. We're in the 19B school time between Klosh and Korba in yellow from Galway versus the team in navy. Down there, it's Bantry. It's Klosh and Pubble, uh, Bantry from Cork. So, I joined here with Matt Hall, the UL Eagles coach, and we were watching in the first half, and I suppose it, it was a game, definitely a game of two quarters in the sense that Bantry came out with a 22-12 lead at the end of the first quarter. Really nice play, hit some nice jump shots. And then in the second quarter, it was definitely all Corrib. Obviously, as they won the second quarter, and with 15 points to seven. So it'll be interesting to see just which team has the better second half here now. As already Corrib get on the board there straight away with Oshima Gumhorla. Yeah, Corrib started slowly, but luckily for them, Ward kept them in the game from the three-point line. And you've seen a lot more confidence as you see the first basket of the game for Gormley. I have to go with the English version down here, I'm afraid I, uh, my Irish is not up to scratch. But again, he drives the basket there. And those are things we didn't see in the first quarter from anyone outside of Ward. But it's still the up and down speed of Bantry that's going to be the key to them. If they can finish on the break there, it's going to be a tough game regardless of what happens here. So unfortunately, Shane Murray there gets a uh, referee deemed there. It was, um, he, he called it a blocking foul, but it looked more like a sliding tackle from up here. Just shows, obviously, under 18 B the school final. Both teams want to win this game. So d diving on the loose ball there, Murray was making sure that he went and got the ball. We spoke about it there in the last two minutes of the second quarter there, just about that defence, the boxing one. So it looks as if uh, Bantry going to come out and it was like the exact same thing, trying to limit Crone Ward's touches. Yeah, we talked about Joe having a bit of time there, and you've seen a little bit of a change. There's clearly... As Gormley goes to the basket. Clearly a plan this time for Ward. He set that high screen and then popped to the top of the key. So they've obviously devised some kind of play to get him involved. Which also allowed Gormley to get to the basket for two. First free throw rims out for Gormley. Normally, unfortunately, goes there for two for that one. But Bantry come away with defensive rebound. And again, Bantry looking to push the ball as quick as they can. Kevin Clifford tries to find Cotter on the inside. But the man himself, Gormley, had a really strong second half so far. Comes away with it, but unfortunately, the, tr the layup doesn't go. Shane Murray passes back to Clifford. We've seen Clifford hit two in the first quarter. Cotter on the inside, stoned away by Ward. Ward to Gormley. Gormley makes that one to go. His last two minutes has definitely belonged to Shane Gormley there. He's been everywhere. Four points, been onto the free throw line, had a missed layup. That's it, he could have eight points comfortably in this half, and uh, I don't think we've mentioned his name in the first half. So whatever he took at half time is certainly working for him. He's got the ball again here. Really nice play inside, and Farchie, James McLaughlin can't get that one to go, but it was a really nice play there by the big man inside. Yeah, and Bantry have it all to do here, because certainly in this second half, it's another steal from Gormley. It's looked like a whole different team at the moment. I think Gormley is looking there, obviously, look, if they're going to be taking uh, Cronin Ward, essentially kind of out of the offense, limited his touches. He does free up space, then being in the box, there's a lot of opening space as Thomas Flynn knocks down that long range shot yeah he took a, f a few early from just in front of us here in the first quarter that didn't go in and he certainly looked like he could make them and he's come out second half there with a bit of confidence and he's knocked that one down ball gets scooped up doesn't go blocked away by Cotter unfortunately referee deemed that there was other contact in there that's going to be a foul Bantry about to make a sub there, but Coach Pat Cohen just grabbed back the new man, TJ Sullivan, at the last second. He's now gone in for Liam Cotley, who had a really fast start to the game. He's nine points in the game so far, but 
after the fast start, he's gone a little bit quiet here, so we're probably looking for a little bit more from him in the second half. And again with 6.45 here remaining. Very little in the team, but it's a, right now it's a two-point game as Corby gets that free throw to go. So this one looks like it could go all the way here with both teams, I suppose, matching each other, offense versus offense, de defense versus defense. It'll be interesting to see just which coach comes out on top. McLaughlin again, look, we don't have stats up here, Matt, for, um, I suppose, the rebound perspective. We're only looking at the scores, but McLaughlin doing a really good job there, or defensively and offensively, getting some rebounds for his team. Yeah, he's been extremely impressive. Both ends, and you saw that spin move he did last time down was... Didn't quite go, but it looked a great move. Cronin Ward pulls his offensive rebound. They need to get off a shot here now. The ball hasn't hit the rim. As the referee instructing there that the shot clock was running out. And unfortunately, again, we spoke about that 24-second shot clock. So because Corrib's shot went up and it didn't hit the cylinder, didn't hit the rim, clock didn't reset. And unfortunately, you know, maybe the players were unable to realise... Murray drives right down the middle, goes to Flynn, he knocked down a three-pointer last time. Doesn't want to go for it again. Instead, he gets back to Clifford, also familiar with this three-point line. As he steps inside, this one doesn't go. Gormley, really nice step through there, Matt. Split to the two defenders. It's not often you see a player attack the basket in a one-and-two situation, but Gormley felt that he had what it took to do it. And with that, he's going to force Bantry to call a timeout. Murray to Clifford, back to Murray, puts up that three, looking to use the glass, unfortunately doesn't go. Gormley comes out the rebound, and the referee deems that the ball goes out off Gormley. Clifford to inbound. Let's see if Pat Curran's time out worked, and if he can kind of change some tactics for the team. Clifford fires that one, plenty of arc in that shot, unfortunately hit the back of the rim, it didn't go down. Yeah, you mentioned earlier about uh, the boxing one and a way to defend it with, with Ward there. A lot of guys would put him at the point guard or certainly like to see him get more touches on the fast break even, you know, and every open get him the ball just to keep him in the game a little bit more. And with the ball in his hands, it might free up a little bit more space for other people. Yeah, so here we see him on the ball. It's obviously his targeted man will be Shane Murray's going to pick him up. But we're interested to see if there's any help. Unfortunately, he forces the ball there a bit too much. Murray comes away with it. Carl come up with the steal. And Matt, you spoke with that fast break. Here Ward is on the fast break. Finds McLaughlin. Unfortunately, he can't get it to go. Bantry aren't going to worry, though. They're going to come straight back out with their fast-paced basketball. Somehow or other. With two people to pass, we managed to just about split them. That was the hardest thing to do, possibly, was to miss both of them. But as you mentioned earlier, it's probably the way Coach Pat Cohen wants him to play up and down, and he'll take those mistakes for the easy buckets that you do get. 
See, O'Sheen on the ball. Passes inside to the big man. Doesn't go. Ward will be happy. That's his first score in a, probably about 10 minutes of basketball. So he'd be happy that he was able to pick up a nice two there. Keep himself ticking over. Yeah, and that's what you've got to do. Fight for an offensive rebound, anything like that, when you're being marked closely. Just get a, find out a different way to score rather than the open three-point shots he was getting earlier. Here we go, Ward running the point. McLaughlin goes inside. Really, really nice finish. Good offense there by Ward. You could see a lot of eyes were on him. So then McLaughlin really got the ball, drove right down the heart of the defense. And now, for once, we have Corrib obviously leading and a scoring 38 to 30 with three minutes remaining. Ian yeah, Cronin Ward opted to run the point. He likes to go to the corner to his favourite shots. They're not going to help off him though. Thomas Flynn. Murray, he's hit one earlier. Two three pointers today for Murray. Of course, on the other end there, uh, Matt Bantry don't have any out no three point shooters. You do have three or four guys who like to offer up the three point shot. And that can be probably hard to defend for Corrib. Yeah, they needed to hit that one, huge shot there, but just. They've struggled to score on the break, so that's just managed to stretch the floor a little bit and should give them a little bit more of a chance of getting to the basket. As Cotter there comes up with a little uh, knock, but Oshin Gormley picks up the rebound. Probably just as the shot clock was dying down, he scoops it up to keep seven points within this game. Yeah, Gormley's having a fantastic second half here. Ending he throws up, goes in for him. And on the other end, Thomas Flynn responds with three. So we're trading baskets now at the moment. We're trading twos for Corrib, threes for Bantry. And just on that last turnover, we'll have a timeout to Corrib, which is under two minutes remaining. Cotter blocked away by James McLaughlin. Of course, your referee Joe Robinson deems that there was a bit of contact just on the forearm. Oh, Coach Packard looking up at the clock there, realizing it's four points in the game, and Cotter has a chance to make this a one possession game. Third foul on James McLaughlin, which would be interesting. And again, as physical as he is and getting to the baskets, easy to pick up fouls. So he'll have to be a little bit careful. Cotter gets the two to go. Machine Gormley just indicating exactly what he wants his team to do. And I think the instruction was, Matt, get out of the way. I've got this one. As Gormley gets away to the basket there and finishes that. Yeah, for the first time too as well, he saw a little bit of man-to-man -man from Bantry. But, I mean, I suppose it wasn't something expected after the first half. Gormley wouldn't have been on the radar. But this half, it's been all Gormley. Goes himself again, just McLaughlin uses the ball screen, moves inside. We spoke about his physicality there, uh, Matt. Could be 
Good misfortune. He could have picked up a charge in the foul there as he kind of went, went a bit out of control, throwing himself into the bantry bodies. With that, Pat Curran's going to take his second time out, so he's only one remaining. With one ten remaining in this third quarter. Lachlan goes to the lane and gets the first one to go. Okay, this is Gus Sullivan takes the rebound. So 43 plays 38 with just one minute remaining in the third quarter. Bantry looking to finish this quarter strong just to give him, keep him right in this game coming into the last quarter. As Murray fires up that long three, he likes to shoot. This banter team uh, definitely aren't shy that three point nine, Matt. They like to offer up a lot of three pointers. Yeah, they put up a couple in the end, end of the first half and start of this half. Kept them in the game a little bit whilst the fast break's not been working. Interesting enough, now they're man to man. You'd expect to see a little bit more of Ward, but he's almost stayed a little bit still like he did in the in the box on one. So I'd like to see him get a bit more movement and be more involved. They'd be well used to face a man to man, so you'd think they'd have a few more plays that would get him open. But having said that, at the moment, they're having no trouble scoring. So maybe Coach Norton just thinks stick to the other guys who can't be guarded and leave Shane Murray out guarding Ward where he can't be too much of a factor. Madden's first one rims out. This is second to go. Just takes us up to a six-point lead in favour of Corrib. It's just under 30 seconds remaining. Bantry will be looking to get a score here. Be interesting to see will they look to go inside or will they settle for that three? And with that one there now, that foul, if Joe Robinson seen what we seen, yes, it's a blocking foul on James McLaughlin. It's gonna be his fourth personal foul. So with that, Joe Nocton's not gonna take any chance and he's gonna take his big man out. Keep him on the bench where he can't commit any fouls for now. And maybe just keep him maybe for the last four or five minutes just to get this job done if needed. Yeah, and that's huge now because as we spoke about early, he's been a massive part offensively and defensively. Be interesting to see how they do on the defensive boards while well, he's out. Martin Connolly has taken his spot, so he's got big shoes to fill. And here we are to finish the quarter. Ward with five seconds to go. Gives it the Gorm lead, the man in this quarter. Excellent defense. Bit of a no hope over. It doesn't go. So 44 38. The end of three. We'll be back very shortly for this fourth quarter.
So, welcome back ladies and gents to this fourth quarter. Last game of this Tuesday afternoon, and it's Bantry who trail for 38 points to Corum on 44. Gormley had a really strong third quarter, so he hands the ball off to Cahill Madden. So, I suppose it's all or nothing now with 10 minutes to go in this Subway Schools Cup. As Ward drives inside, excellent block away by the big man there. Cotter. Unfortunately, they can't get it to go. Bantry again looking for that fast break. Probably be a bit unhappy that they're not getting the baskets to go. As Gormley drives inside, scoops this one. Rebound tipped out by Flynn. He goes to Murray. Again, the fast break basketball. Gormley. Cross court. Kunghaila. Unfortunately, ball rims out. Look good there, just in and out. I suppose a good enough start for both teams as three goes up. Cotter finds Sullivan on the inside. Gormley comes away with it. We see a bit of Corum's fast break now as Gormley really works it there. Gormley throws his hands out to say referee of his foul. Unfortunately, referee Joe Robinson deemed that. Took a bit, one maybe one or two extra steps to draw that contact. There's going to be a travelling ball in favour of Bantry. Cotter on the inside. Sullivan with a really big rebound. Cotter puts it back up again. Cotter not getting the roll there in the second half like he did in this first quarter. So Bantry have deemed started to go inside there in the last position. Unfortunately, had no success again. Cronin Ward faking that shot, just getting the Bantry people up in the air. And again, it's Mr. Clifford himself. Score of two three-pointers in the first half. To Murray. Murray goes underneath. That just shows, I suppose, there, Matt, the defensive presence on Cronin Ward. Forcing Murray to rethink his shot there. Yeah, he's had a very quiet period since getting uh, 15 early. He's now on 17 points. But defensively, I mean, he must be getting close to five, six blocks. And he certainly changed another five or six shots he did in that last one. So, you know, at both ends of the floor... Even though they've not been able to get him open so much, he stayed playing and, and being the be defensive stopper they needed in this uh, last quarter and a half. That's Gormley here to point. Does a lot of dribbling here in the corner. Gets the ball back to Madden, throws his head fake. He drives inside. Gormley, another block there by Cotter. Really using his length. To Flynn, they go on the break. That time Flynn did a really good job there, kind of turning his body in the air. Just using his body to shield himself from the, the aggressive Cronin Ward. So it wouldn't be a blocked shot. So Bantry have it back to 44, play 40. Corrib setting a lot of ball screens up top here. Cahal Madden uses that left hand of his to drive inside. Scoops it up while his defender was on his right hand shoulder. Draws the foul and he's going to go to the line shooting one now. Nice move that time for Madden, and a good finish. And again, as soon as they manage to shut one player down, someone else keeps stepping up for Coeb. But they're still right in the game here. And obviously, this is, remember, this is a period you know, where James McLaughlin there, number two for Coeb, is sitting on the bench. So Bantry will really need to capitalise on this when the big man is out there. So you can see there Liam Cotter getting the offensive rebound. This is the second offensive rebound in the quarter. It just shows what the difference when you take uh, McLaughlin out of the middle of that key. Yeah, Cotton has been a little bit more active inside there. Lawless and Keneally have done well up till there in the boards, two big fellas, but uh, we just see starting to see the re-emergence of Liam Cotter. And that free throw probably give him a little bit more confidence to maybe finish some of the ones he's got inside here in this corner. Looking to slow teams down. It's Gormley does a bit of a dribble drive. Gets it back to Madden. Madden's been a bit active here in this last quarter for his team. Cotter is doing a really good job on the offensive and defensive rebounds, securing the ball. As Thomas Flynn moves away, puts up that three. Looks at the referee, Mark Gilman, to say, Mark, he hit my hand. Unfortunately, the referee didn't see it that way. So it's Gormley that comes away with the ball. Excellent sidestep there, just a step away from the good defence. 
and put the ball in off the glass. So Corrib lead 48 minutes 41 with 6 minutes 15 seconds remaining. Yeah, Banshee had numbers back that time but didn't do a good enough job to put off Gormley with the confidence he's got and he had a nice finish off the board. Murray, Clifford wants it. Dribble drive inside. Scoops it up. To get the danger time a little bit here for Banshee. Seven point lead. And a game as tight as it's been the whole time. You know, with nerves on the line. If, if uh, a score for Corrib here, if they go up to us nine and ten, the Banshee fellas might lose a little bit of confidence. They need to get a stop here in a score. Gormley uses his speed to go in underneath. Excellent basket. I know, I think Coach Pat Coroner looking over there. He's thinking to himself, I've one time out left. Will I take it now or could I need it? He's hoping that some of his guys can step up here and do a job for him. And just like that, Thomas Flynn, not a stranger to a three-point here in the National Basketball Arena today. He knocks one down to take back to a six-point game. Huge C from Flynn. They really needed a score there and he provides that. Now they need a stop here just to get it back down lower than a little six and maybe five or four. As Ward drives inside. It was good to see there uh, Cronin Ward being a bit aggressive there as we spoke about him. Really strong first half. Got kind of taken out of it during the third quarter. But again, being a big player for his team here, he probably needs to step up and be aggressive for the last five minutes to get him over the line. Yeah, and he showed, he showed, that, he showed that he can put the ball on the floor. He's good dribbling skills. So, she said, he'd like to see him just be a bit more aggressive, put some pressure onto Shane Murray, who's played a lot of minutes here in this game. Just see if he can stop and get into the basket. Warren knocks down the first, taking his total is to 18 points here today. With that one, takes it to 19 points. Remember that five three points was in total for Cronin Ward. So again, with this five minutes to go, a point game. The free score on Bantry put up 20 points in the first quarter, so they were, you know, well able to score the basketball. But since in the last two quarters, and including half of this quarter, they only had 24, so it's just showing that the Corrib defense is definitely working. So Bantry will need to get something going out quite early. Hugh Fitzgerald puts one up. That one rims out. Sullivan takes the rebound. Mr. Flynn, he'll put it up if he has that. And it's his day today, man, I think. You know, when you're getting that type of roll from that distance. That one went up to the rafters there, nearly touched off the lights. But came down, bounced his way in. And two big threes, keeping his team in it right now. Speaking of three-pointers. Don't sleep on that guy. Cronin Ward gets an inch, takes a three. And with that, Mr. Curran is going to take his last time out with 4.18 remaining. Welcome back. Just over four minutes remaining here now. As Mr. Flynn, the three-point shooter, puts it up again off the glass this time. So Matt, he's really stepped up here now. Thomas Flynn in the last quarter. He's had the last eight points of Bantry. Yeah, and he's had to really. Cobb have scored points from everywhere and Ward has stepped up again. This guy here, Madden, again shows his class. So they've needed the scoring in order to keep him in the game, but they'll need plenty more than lead us back to eight. As he goes again, looking to get the roll of fortune, he didn't get this time. 
Just shows there what type of shooter he is. Mr. Uh, Pat Curran there looks on, you know, he was, he was a fairly quick shot within the offence, but Pat Curran was happy enough for him to take that shot. Just, he has to have a good shooting there. As this time they, they give Murray a go. Yeah, I suppose it's just amazing what uh, a big game can do to players because as we see another three from Ward in the first quarter you could never have seen this kind of performance from the card from what we what we saw in the first quarter and the players what the other players did if it hadn't been for Ward's three-point shooting they'd have been long out of the game but now all of a sudden we've seen they've got five or six players that can all put the ball on the floor can all score inside and this is all whilst one of their main players James McLaughlin has been on the bench Excellent defence there by Madden, just done well to tip that ball away. And here comes the man himself, Mr Flynn, the three-point threat. Two and a half remaining, let's see, can he get his team going here? Clifford. So, 2.30 remaining, he's on four folds. But Joe knocked in, inputs James McLaughlin. Good substitution, I think he know, Joe knows that he can't take the foul home to Carlo with him, so he may as well go in and play. Yeah, he might just be what they need there. Bigger body inside, grab some of those offensive rebounds, defensive rebounds. He's also steady with the ball as he's been guarded here by Cotter. Formerly really good use of his ball handling skills. The Bantry fans again chanting, we love you Bantry, trying to get behind their team. Will this help Clifford? Unfortunately, it doesn't. Brady comes away with it. Flynn, he's had success in this quarter. Both Bantry players go off the court, trying to keep the ball in play. As Cronin Ward comes away with it, just tells the team to relax and tries to steady the ship. He's aware that his team, you know, don't need to score straight away here. They won't be too happy with that offence, giving the ball back to Bantry. Well, Shane Gormley are stopping the ball there. I think he deemed that he didn't want to maybe give Bantry the fast break. I was going to force Bantry to beat him. Bit unlucky there. The referee didn't see that as intentional foul. There wasn't much intent to get the ball. Yeah, oh. I think referee Joe Robinson just gave him a warning there that uh, next time he would call an intentional foul. Time's ticking away a little bit here for, for Bantry. It's still trailing eight. They really need a score and a stop quickly. Gormley looking to dribble it out. Referee Joe Robinson sees as a travel. I think for Cora here, they need to just stick with, within their game maybe and keep moving the ball and run their offense as they did. You know, there's nothing worse when you're tr trying to play it for the clock to run out because it can go against you. Again, Bantry offer up that three-pointer. It's interesting enough, Matt, with, with the amount of three-pointers Bantry have missed in the last minute and a half, if they'd uh, shot twos every time, maybe the higher percentage shot, it may not be looking at an eight-point game. Yeah, any type of score would have been good for them. You say they got the foul line, but I suppose you live by it and you die by it. They'd be up by now if they'd made them. That's what they're thinking, but the pass just goes astray. Really last chance saloon here for Bantry. They need to get the ball quickly. And the next time down, get a quick score. Ward moves inside. Gives to his big man. He spins, really nice step through. He's got that uh, second jump ability. He's able to go back and get the ball if he has that. 
as Cotter comes away with it. Done a really good job on the defensive rebounds for his team today. A lot of bad, bad, bad fouls that happens there, just stops him getting an open three-point shot. They're not in the penalty, so they'll be able to set up in the zone here and guard the three-point line, which is probably really the only way back into it with 38 seconds to go. Ball gets swung around, Clifford puts up a big one. Cotter inside. Kind of thinks that's enough three-point, does this to get a, basket, a ball on the board here now? And Bantry come away with 20 seconds remaining. Six point game. It's a big one. McLaughlin. There's no messing around with him. He's just going to dribble all the way. Put the ball in the basket. Show to his teammates. Let's go. And as the clock dies down, 4 3, 2 and 1. Bantry put up a shot. It's Clausen Carlin, who went out on a score right here. 59 plays 51.